Okay, Ridge Runner Nation, with January now here, we thought we'd reflect back on 2018 for our top runners from the year. So Wesley and I and some others have been discussing who are the top ultra runners from the state of Ohio. Um, North American ultra runners are voted by the Ultra Running Magazine, um, but there's no official like Ohio ultra runner of the year. Yeah, so, so we thought we'd make the Ridge Runner Nation Ultra Runner, Ohio Ultra Runner of the Year, and uh, really see who the best runners in 2018 were. Yeah, so we won't really weigh in on our top runners, our personal choices, but we'll put out their resumes here. Just we selected five or six of the top men, five or six of the top women, and we'll just highlight their resumes real quick, and then we'll put up a poll for you guys to vote for your Ohio Ultra Runner of the Year. So here we go. Uh, on the men's side. First name that kind of came to mind with us was Travis Zipfell. Uh, Wesley, if you want to kind of run through his year. Yeah, Travis had an unbelievable year. He got it started at the Mount Mitchell Challenge in uh, Black Mountain, North Carolina. This is an old school 36 mile, 40 mile race. Uh, he took second overall there in 450, only losing to the uh, current course record holder. So uh, after that, he went to the Buzzard Day 50K and the Thunder Bunny 50K. He won Buzzard Day and took second at Thunder Bunny. Uh, then he hit his A race of the year, I'd say, the Mohican 100 miler. Do you want to talk about how he did there? Yeah, so Mohican was probably his top performance of the year with a, a win, an outright win at 100 miler. I think you know when you're looking at like ultra marathons, you can maybe heavily weigh in, uh, weigh 100 mile uh, results more so than like 50ks for sure. Um, then he went on to the 60k at the Hocking Hills Indian Run where he won. And then he went to another big 100 miler, the Grindstone 100, where he took second. Uh, Big time result, um, and then he capped off the year with a, another 50k win at Tecumseh Trail, uh, Trail 50k. Yeah, um, Travis had a really complete year. Uh, he got first or second in every race he ran, including first and second at a hundred mile race as well. So, so another name that we're really familiar with is Mike Cooper. Um, he also had a really stellar year, especially like the start of his year. Um, he started off with a half marathon, which isn't an ultra marathon, but still a really good result. He won the Iron Furnace Trail Run half marathon. And then he actually beat Travis Zipfell at the Thunder Bunny 50K. So like a head-to-head -head win there for Mike. Um, and then he won the Mohican 50-miler. Mm -hmm. So Travis won the 100-miler. Uh, Mike won the 50-miler. So really solid start to his um, the first half of the year. Yeah, and Mike won that 50-miler in 722. That is a really, really fast time for the Mohican 50-miler. So it was a really good performance. Yep. And then Mike also went to Grindstone where he finished seventh. So a little bit behind Travis in that result. And then he capped off a zero. So a couple more top three finishes at the Shawnee 50, third place, and the Bigfoot 50K, another third place finish. So really good year for Mike as well. Moving on down the list. Oh, this guy. We got uh, Michael Owen decided to make the list this year. He I kind of had a interesting year, I'd say. He went to the Primus Land 50K and was a little under the weather but till, took second place overall. Then he went to his big race of the year, Western States 100, and finished 21st in 19 hours. And then after that, he went uh, back to Grindstone again to really try to get a big win there. And he ended up taking the win, beating Travis and Mike in that race. And uh, that was his year. But really, yeah. I mean, I shouldn't even be considered with only three races. <laughs> that was, yeah, that just wasn't. So don't even consider me, guys, but <laughs> moving on. You, I'll vote for you. Let's do Jeremy Pope here. Uh, just there's a lot of like men from Ohio who won 100 mile races. So Jeremy Pope is another name on this list. He won the Bernie River 100 miler. Mm -hmm. Also, short sort of a uh, smaller like resume from 2018. Um, he was fourth place at the Mohican 50 miler. Um, he was third place at the Super Bowl Trail 50k, and then he got second place at the New Hop. Trail 50k, um, so pretty good year. He obviously winning the Burning River 100 was the biggest highlight for him. Yeah, I mean, especially winning it in the final uh, couple of miles. There. Yeah, he I passed mean, for uh, another Pope, Sean Pope, in mm -hmm. the last half mile. I think it was. So. I mean, so to win a hundred mile in the last half mile is absolutely crazy. So well done. And here's another name on the list: um, Brian Pullen, who actually paced Jeremy Pope uh, for that Burning River win. But I had to include Brian on here because. I think he was the person from Ohio who I think I found who ran the fastest 100-mile race of the year. Um, he ran 14.24 for the Canal Corridor 100-miler. Really, really stout 100-mile time. And he was second place behind Mike Cooper at the Mohican 100, uh, 50, excuse me, 
and then he won the Regal Beagle 50K. So only three results for Brian. Um, so sort of a smaller race resume for him as well. Um, Some really fast times in there. Yeah. So here's another name, Zach Marin, if you want to highlight his year. Yeah, Zach Marin got it started at the uh, Super Bowl Trail Championships as well. He took second place overall. Then he went to the Buzzer Day 50K and took third place overall, just behind Travis there. He decided to head down to the Umstead 50 miler in Raleigh, North Carolina. Won that race in six hours, 55 minutes. Uh, took to the next race as the Ultra Race of Champions. Uh, 14th place overall in a super competitive race. Yeah, it's a big time race. And then took most of the summer off, it looks like, racing wise. Uh, finished out the year at the Indiana Trail 100 miler in Indiana with a win yeah. in 16 hours and one minute. Super awesome results. Then he came out to the Shawnee 50, where he finished fifth overall. Yeah, so, so also another one of those guys who won a 100-miler from the state of Ohio. So really representing well. Um, Pete Kotelnik, he's a new resident of Ohio. Just moved here, I think, sometime in the middle of 2018. Um, has some results all over the board here with timed events, uh, multi-day events, um, and some 100-milers. He also, of course, ran... We won't really include this in our voting or take this into consideration when voting, but he ran from Alaska to Florida for an FKT attempt mm -hmm. on that route and absolutely crushed that. But he ran um, a 24-hour event where he went 80 miles, another 24-hour event where he went 120 miles, um, the Badwater Salt and Sea 81-miler. I never really heard of some of these events. Um, then he won the, um, the O24 mm -hmm. uh, race. I forget what O stands for. Again, but uh, went 116 miles there. <laughs> then he ran. Then he actually he beat Brian Pullen at the Canal Corridor 100 miler with a 1404. Hmm. So that's probably actually the fastest 100 mile time through Ohio. And then he capped off the year just recently at the Desert Solstice 24 hour um, track event, 12th place uh, for the men and 100 miles. Yeah. So I think we got one more up there. Yes, one more. And our last uh, contestant on the men's side. Finalist is David Riddle, and he had a pretty awesome year as well. He uh, ran the Mountain Mist 50K in Huntsville, Alabama to start off his year, taking the win in three hours, 53 minutes, super fast time. time. Went to the Chuckanut 50K and took sixth overall. At the, yeah, that's a really competitive race out in Bellingham, Washington. Very top, you know, like sponsored athlete. So he, he held his own out there. Yeah, he went to the uh, Rock Creek Stump Jump 50K in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and took third place overall in September. And then went to the Stone Steps 50K in Cincinnati at the end of the year to take the overall win in four hours and seven minutes. So awesome year from David as well. Cool. And that'll be kind of like our finalists for the men's side. We'll put all these results up uh, in our post. All right. And for the women, it was kind of strange. Like just picking out these top names. Um, seemed like the women ran a lot more races than the men. Mm -hmm. You know, Travis Zipfell ran like eight races. But uh, Emily Collins, the first name on our women's list, ran... 18 races, I think. Or what did I just say? 14. Four, 14 races. 14 races. Um, and she did really well at all of them. So just kind of rolling through her year. She also did a lot of timed events. Um, she ran 102 miles at the Fast Track 24 back in January. And then at the Black Canyon Altar, she finished 43rd. So a bit farther back at the really competitive 100K. And then she got a another, another 113 miles at another 24-hour race where she won. And then she won the... Keys Ultra 50 miler down in Florida. Um, Mohican 50 miler traditional ultra. She got fifth place over uh, for women. And then she won another 24 hour race with another 113 miles. Uh, so she was just cranking out these 24 hour races, it looks like. Um, a big result here where she was second place overall at the North Coast 24 hour endurance run where she got 123 miles. She that also was, ran another 24-hour one in there and got uh, second place in that race as well, making it 106 miles. When she won outright, the run was hitters 52-miler. 50, um, she got third place at the Tunnel Hill 50-miler. She won another 100 <laughs> miles at the Stinger All-Corners Track Race in Hampton, Georgia. Yeah, and then she capped off her year at a really competitive Desert Solstice 24-hour track race. Um, she was 11th place female with only 65 miles. I think she kind of ran into some troubles there. But overall for Emily... Just a huge year, yeah. race every month, um, sometimes more, and uh, very, very strong resume. Yeah, lots of wins, lots of plus 100-mile distances, and yeah. awesome year. Definitely someone to consider. Lee Connor is a name that is always up there in big 100-mile races in Ohio. She lives up near Cleveland, I think. 
Um, she started off the year with a third place women's finish at the Orcas Island 100 miler, um, 26 hours, really good result. And she was third place overall. She does these big mountain races. So Georgia death race, third place overall female, um, forget your PR at the Mohican 50 K second place. Another big 100 mile at the Hellbender in North Carolina, third place again. So that's three third place 100 milers for her mountain. Yeah. And then she won right, her best result of the year, the Cruel Jewel 100 miler. Um, really, really tough mountain 100 miler in uh, Georgia where she won 30 hours. And then she goes second in the Ute 100 miler. And that's another tough result, 30 <laughs> hours there, second place. And then she finished out with the Ozark Trail 100 miler where she took seventh overall. So. Seventh uh, place. In the yeah, I mean, I, I think that's uh, six hundred milers, and with the exception of that seventh place finish, she was first, second, or third. So that's a really, really competitive year for Lee. Yeah, and then Connie Gardner is a name that's always on the leaderboard. She's actually probably finished top ten in the North American polls in her career, but um, as always, she was crushing this year's results with the fast track 24 she just had a six hour race to start off the year where she did run 39 miles for the win and then she won a hundred miler eagle up hundred um down it's actually an ohio race yep and then she was second in the mohican hundred yeah. she's won that race like eight times or something crazy um, but she was second place this year and then she was first in the olander ultra uh 24 hour where she ran 110 miles and then finished out the year at the desert solstice track race like a bunch of others have and she made it 89 miles for 10th overall so awesome year so yeah connie always is crushing it amanda debevec also one of those ladies that just threw down a ton of races this year um, i saw her at a couple places uh, but she had a huge race schedule um looks like about 9 10 11 races for yeah. the year. <laughs> um, awesome year. Wes, you can highlight her. Year. Yeah, so she started off at the Orcas Island 100 miler where she took 4th overall. She went then in the forget the PR Mohican 50k, took 3rd place, the Heiner Trail 50k, super hard race and super competitive. She got 3rd place overall. Then she went to the World's End Ultra Marathon 100k, got 3rd place again. Burning River back 50, she took the win there, so they break up their race front half, back half, back halves. A little harder at night on trails, mostly. So great win there. The Kodak 100 miler, uh, she took fifth overall, running 34 hours. The Youngstown Ultra Trail 50K, she took the win there. Grindstone 100 miler, she got 13th place overall in a super competitive field. And then uh, she went ran Conquer the Castle 25K, won that race, and then she finished it out with the Shawnee 50, taking second place overall. So yeah, big year. Awesome race. Seems like she is... Uh does all the harder races as well. Yeah. And then Crystal Shanowski, um, another name that runs some uh, big races and, and takes some top spots. Uh, she ran the Fools 50K, second place to start off the year. The Heiner Trail, where she, um, she got 17th place. And then she won the Thunder Bunny 50K, a big win for her. She did the World's End 100K, where she got ninth place. Um, Doan Creek 50K, she got first. And then she was 12th place at Grindstone, 100 awesome miler. Finish. And then she was 5th place at the Shawnee 50. So really strong year for Crystal. And then to wrap up our women's considerations, um, a name that really I hadn't really heard much of um, until I started doing some research, but Melissa Terwilliger. Mm -hmm. um, she won the Burning River 100 miler. That's definitely her standout win of the year. Um, but she also got second at the Mohican Marathon. She won the Play Possum 50K, and then she also won the Conquer the Castle Trail 100K. Yeah, I mean, some super fast times in there. The 100K, 11 hours, the 100 miler, 21 hours, and the Marathon of Mohican, 426. So. Yeah, so she only had four races, but all four of them were those three wins and, and one second place. So very, very uh, good year for Melissa. Yeah, so that's basically all of our uh, finalists for the Ridge Runner Nation's Ultra, Ohio Ultra Run of the Year. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a really competitive field. I mean, everyone had a really awesome year. Everyone, the field is completely stacked. If you thought we left anyone out, let us know in the comment section and who you think that maybe should be up for consideration. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Yeah, just uh, vote. 
and uh, just choose who you think is the best runner from Ohio this year. Yeah, and let us know, and you stay tuned on the next rundown where we'll review the results from the Ohio's Ultra Runner of the Year. So, cool. Have a good one. Yeah, thanks, guys.